worshiping. Well, let's get ready to hear the word of the Lord. For those of you that came a little late, we are in a season of fasting and praying. It is amazing how the Lord is able to sustain us when we put our trust in him. I know and I believe it is not possible to go without food unless the Lord is with you. So we thank him for his sustaining power. Good things are happening here. I have something on my heart that I would like to share with each one of us. Last week, our message was entitled, The Journey into the Unknown. Emphasizing the fact that as the year begins, we have got 12 months ahead of us, all of which are uncertain. You have no idea what is going to happen. So biblical wisdom tells us that the way to start the journey into the unknown is in the presence of the Lord, where you get to seek him. Talk to him about what you want to see. Ask for his protection. Ask for his empowerment and the fullness of his spirit. As we are in this season of fasting, I would like you to turn with me to Psalms, the book of Psalms 42, and uh, Beulah led us in a song that talks exactly about that. Praise God. Yes. Psalm and Psalm 42, we shall read the first two verses. Praise God. Praise the Lord. If you are there, say amen, including those at home. Psalm 42, verse 1 and 2, here's what the Bible says. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? Precious Holy Spirit, may you reveal the mysteries of this word to us. We know that you have got a word for us for now and as we begin this journey into the unknown. I pray for your servant that the word that proceeds out of his mouth shall be the very words of God. I pray for simplicity of understanding for each one of us. May you quicken our hearts by the power of this word that we may be provoked unto action. We pray for those listening from home that as this word goes through the airwaves to reach their homes, may there be divine visitation in those places. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. From the passage we have read, I want to talk about hunger. And I've entitled the message, Hunger for God. So that I know that I'm speaking to the right audience, let me ask the question as we start. How many of us have been hungry before? Lift your hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise God. There are different types of hunger that we get to experience as human beings. This morning, I would like us to draw our attention to a healthy type of hunger which every person ought to have at all times. Now, the truth about hunger is that no sooner do you feel hungry then you begin to put measures in place to eliminate hunger. The reason our fridges are full of food is an attempt to eliminate hunger. But there is a type of hunger that is healthy, which needs to stay with you each time. And this is spiritual hunger, or otherwise called hunger for God. Every one of us has experienced hunger before you, before, just like we, we noticed at the beginning of the service. Maybe even as I speak, some of us are hungry. Because hunger is a normal part of life. We feel hungry every day. 
Speaking from a natural point of view, hunger can be defined as the discomfort or pain caused by prolonged lack of food. When you are hungry, one thing will surely happen. You will have a strong desire and a craving for food. If you agree with that, say amen. The craving for food when you are hungry can be so strong and so overpowering and weakening that you are robbed of the ability to concentrate. Until you grab food and satisfy that hunger, that's when you can focus. Physical hunger, is that real? And it is something that we experience every day. In the same way, God has designed our spiritual lives to experience hunger. Just as physical hunger is so strong, so overpowering and weakening, evoking a craving for food, we were designed to be so spiritually hungry that we crave for God, pursue him until we get him. This is what the person who wrote the psalm, Psalm 42, that we read, is talking about. He uses the word thirst, which has the same implications as hunger when addressing a craving for food, or for God, sorry. The word thirst and hunger are used interchangeably in describing a craving for God. When we are thirsty, we become desperate. When we are hungry, we equally become desperate. So hunger and thirst are used in the same way as we describe a craving for God. So the writer of Psalm 42 writes and says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? This psalm is a wonderful and powerful image of a deer aching with thirst. Perhaps this thirst came as a result of a drought, prolonged lack of water. So this deer is so thirsty, it is desperately thirsty. And it goes into a hot pursuit of water. The writer uses this imagery to depict a craving for God that one must have, whereby you are almost fainting from the craving of wanting to be with God. In this thirst and craving, the writer says, when can I go and meet with God? He is so thirsty, he is so hungry, he is so desperate, and he cannot wait. It's like God is far-fetched, and he has got to do everything that possibly can be done to get to God and encounter him. In the same way, we suffer from hunger and from natural thirst, and we become desperate. God designed our spiritual lives to suffer hunger for God. And what a blessing it is if as you listen to this message you are already hungry for God. That hunger should be in you and in me at all times and it should never leave your soul. Among the problems we face today among God's people is a loss of hunger for God. In other words, we have lost hunger for God. We are not hungry anymore. We have got hunger for everything else except God. It is like the Bible says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 12, which says, all have turned away. There is no one who does good, not even one. Everything with God begins with hunger for him. Unless you are hungry for God, you cannot achieve him. You cannot live a godly life. You cannot even be an effective witness for God without hunger. 
Without it, you actually have got nothing. Revivals that ever happened, happened before because people became hungry. I'm coming from a country where a revival took place. And as I speak, I can see what we experienced at that time. People became hungry of mainland churches and religion that did no good to anybody. They decided to run amok with Christ. So there were overnight prayer meetings everywhere. People prayed in the station. They prayed in the bus. They prayed in the toilet. They prayed as they were everywhere. You couldn't walk your street going home without meeting somebody with a tract to give to you. People became hungry. And this is what God wants us to achieve moving forward. Spiritual growth that ever happened, happened because individuals became hungry. The same is true with every breakthrough and victory. It happened because people became hungry and they began to seek God. Hunger for God, brethren, is the place to start. You need it and you need it now. The prayer that each one of us should pray as we go through this fast is, Lord, send a hunger within my soul. That is a prayer to pray every day until this fast is over. Hunger for God is repeatedly talked about in the Bible. It is an appetite for God. It is a strong desire and a deep longing for God's presence and for an encounter with him. It is when hunger is achieved for God that everything else begins to fall into place. We see an example of that from Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 33 and verse 15. When God told Moses that an angel would go before them and cause them to possess the promised land, Moses told God that he was not interested unless God went with him. If your presence does not go with us, Moses tells God, do not even start talking about sending us there. Moses was more hungry for God than he was for the blessings of the promised land. Hunger for God is what you need. It is what I need. And this day should not pass you by. This season should not pass you by until you have achieved a hunger for God. Just like you feel hungry, when church is done, what is going to happen? For those that are eating, the very first thing to do is to go to a restaurant to eat. We do that. Because the stomach is craving for that. Why don't we do the same for our spiritual lives? Where the same power of hunger that drives you to your kitchen in the middle of the night, you also have the same drive for God. This is what Psalm 42 is about. Now, why do we need hunger for God? Allow me to talk about three things. Number one, hunger stops at nothing until it is filled. Proverbs 27 verse 7 says, He who is satisfied loathes honey. But to the hungry soul, any bitter thing is sweet. The second part of that verse can be summarized in one word, desperation. Hunger makes a man become so desperate to eat that they will go far and wide in search of food. When they find it, they won't care whether it is sweet or bitter. They will eat it. There was a time, 2008, when Zimbabwe, our neighboring country, went through a recession. It was so bad. People began to flee the country to come into neighboring Zambia, neighboring Botswana, neighboring Namibia. So I have a friend of mine who is a chartered certified accountant who runs an accounts firm. So he decided to invite one person from Zimbabwe who was hungry. 
And he took him to a very good restaurant. My friend taught me the experience at meal time. He said, Joachim, I was so moved at what I saw as I ate with this man from a neighboring country. When food was saved, when it was just brought and placed on the table, my friend Evans saw saliva dripping from the mouth of this man, literally on the, on the, on the floor. He was so desperately hungry. Hunger is such a strong overpowering and weakening emotion that people will even risk their lives in order to satisfy it. A member of our church back in Africa had a house broken into in the middle of the night and the only thing that thieves did was to eat her food. They broke the back door, went into the kitchen, opened the fridge and ate everything that was ready to be eaten. When she woke up the next morning and went to the kitchen, lo and behold, the kitchen was a mess. Empty bottles of mayonnaise flown all over because they had even gone into the pantry in search of food. They opened the fridge and a pot that was full of cooked chicken. They pounced on it and they mowed the chicken and threw the pot. When she woke up in the morning, all she found was pieces of food all over the place. The bones of chicken thrown everywhere in the place. Hunger stops at nothing until it is filled. I also know a young man who was so hungry and he went to bed on an empty stomach. He was too hungry, he couldn't sleep. He was tossing and turning in his bed for hours. Around 1 a.m., anger pains grew so intense and became unbearable. He rose from his bed, went outside to a bird house. He grabbed a pigeon that was deep in sleep, grabbed it from the bird house, slaughtered it, cooked it, and ate it. This happened around one in the morning. And only then could he catch sleep. Hunger is the strongest motivation in a human body. It will trouble you until you do something about it. It is for that reason that we are to be hungry for God. Because the power of hunger will drive you to seek God and you will be unstoppable until you achieve God and experience him. That is the power of hunger. In his own words, Jesus put it this way in Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. When you have hunger in your soul for God, the Bible says the power of that hunger will forcefully move you toward God. For that reason, Jesus says, blessed are you if you are hungry and thirsty. You won't care what people are saying. You will just pursue God because hunger is driving you. You won't care what stands in your way. You'll be ready to break through barriers and limitations if that is what it means to get to satisfy the hunger. For that reason, Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, which represents God. And then he gives a promise, they shall be filled. Brethren, hunger is what you need. Our community too needs hunger. I believe that before we even begin to think about reaching our community, one of the things to pray for is a hunger for God. Because when the people of our, of our community are hungry for God, you know what's going to happen? We won't invite them to church. Hunger will overpower them. They'll come running to church uninvited. So Jesus says, blessed are you if you have got hunger. And as the year begins, as we are launching into the unknown, what we need, church, is to be filled with hunger for God. 
Because if we shall live the lives God wants us to live, if we shall be effective servants of God, if we are going to be the agents of change, we will need first of all to have been occupied with a hunger for God. Because hunger stops at nothing until it is satisfied. Number two, hunger increases the capacity for consumption. A person that is hungry wants to eat more and they will eat and they will eat and they will eat. I have a cousin who no matter how he ate, he wanted to eat. In those days, you know, we had a traditional way of eating. You know, it's not like you get a side plate and save yourself. No, we didn't eat like that. Our parents prepared something big and put it in a dish. So there will be cornmeal that is prepared in, and, and, and it's a heel. And then another plate for beans, another one for vegetables. So we sit around that. And we begin to take it down. All of us would be full, you know, and uh, begin to go, walk away from the food to go and wash our hands. My cousin will remain. He ate and ate. And no matter how he ate, he wanted to eat. That might be an indication of ill health. But trust me, church, there is a good spiritual lesson right there. It is good to be hungry for God because when you are, you will always want to receive and to receive and to receive. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1 verse 53, He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. Those who thought they had it all and didn't need God, the Bible says, he sent them away empty. And there are people like that who think they have got it all. I mean, I have connections. My bank account is, is, is full and strong. I am established. I have these assets. And they think they have got it all. And so there is this attitude, I don't need anybody. The Bible says God sent them away empty-handed. But for those that were hungry, those who felt a need for God and expressed that need to God, the Bible says God filled them. When we hunger for God, we establish a place for God to fill us and he will continue to fill us. He will fill you with his praises. He will fill you with his goodness. God lives among the hungry. So the question is, are you hungry this morning? You are to be hungry for God because in that state, you have a huge capacity to take in more and more of God. And God is faithful. As long as you are hungry, he will not stop filling you. He will continue to pour and pour. You come tomorrow because you express a hunger, he continues to pour. This is what prophet Isaiah is referring to when you read Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 3. He prophesied and said, I will pour, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon dry ground. I will pour water on what? On thirsty ground. On one that is thirsty. And floods I will pour upon dry ground. God is very selective and very specific as on whom he pours his spirit. According to this verse, it is upon him that is thirsty. Not just anybody. Are you looking for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? or for the outpouring of God's presence upon you, there is a condition to that. There has to be thirst. Dry ground is thirsty ground. In that state of dryness, 
It may be cracked or dusty as powder. This is the kind of ground that God chooses to pour water on. Because it is ready to receive and to soak in. A slightest drop will be absorbed as quickly as it falls down. A person that is thirsty is like that. He is like dry ground. They are desperately ready for God's outpouring and they are ready to consume without question and without delay. Hunger for God is needed because when you have it, you are like dry ground. The conditions in which we lived, we saw droughts from time to time. The ground would be so dry. In some places, it would be so cracked. In other places where it is soft, it would be dusty like powder. You drop a drop of water there, you won't even see how it has sunk under. God says, that is the person upon whom he shall pour his spirit. Think about that. <laughs> now God is trying to bring us to that place where the first place we begin is the state of our hearts because that is where it begins. So we need hunger because with hunger you have a huge capacity to continue soaking in from God. So the Lord is saying, seek hunger and stay hungry. It is the right place to be for God to continue pouring into your life. Lastly, hunger is healthy. In the natural, hunger is a, it's a sign that you're in good health. When people are sick, usually sickness would rob them of appetite. The moment they feel well and they are no longer sick, the very first thing they'll ask for is food. Give me some food. A sign that you're a healthy person is feeling hungry. Healthy people feel hungry. Loss of appetite is an indication that you're not well. The same thing is true of spiritual hunger. God designed us to be in fellowship with him. As such, he wired us to have a hunger for him. It's the only way you can achieve fellowship. There has got to be something that draws us to him. Having created us with a purpose to be in fellowship with him, he puts in us a spiritual hunger. It is there. Psalm 42, verse 1 and 2. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for the living God. This scripture describes how we are made. We are made to long for him. Which means where there is no appetite for God indicates that something is spiritually wrong. When people have no desire whatsoever for God, when people begin to exist like God doesn't exist, when people become so indifferent and live in a different world, so detached from God and so unconcerned, then you know that there is a sickness there. Because we are wired to have an appetite for God. And I pray that if you are in that state where there is no appetite for God, you have come to the right place and those that are listening, you are in the right place. Because this is where the doctor of your soul is present. When there is no appetite for God, Jesus Christ becomes the physician to fix that. In Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3, 
The Bible says, he humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known. This is talking about the children of Israel. They were in the wilderness. They had never seen manna before. And they, have never, they had never tasted manna before. And most of the times when you are presented with food that you have never seen before, you have never tasted before, normally there is no appetite for that because you don't know how that is going to affect your health. So they are in the wilderness. There is no place to buy. There is no food. So God decides to send food from heaven. And this food is called manna. So they are seeing it for the first time. Now here is the interesting part. When God gave them manna, he also did one more thing. He gave them the appetite for it. He caused them to hunger for manna. That's what the Bible says. He humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna. What is this saying? God has the capacity to give you hunger. If you realize that, there is no hunger for you in your soul. Here is a scripture that tells us that God is able to give you hunger. He is able to arouse an appetite within you. So that you begin to hunger for him and chase after him. Where there is no appetite, there is sickness. But when people have got an appetite to eat and they go and feed themselves, that is a sign of good health. And the same thing is true to ourselves spiritually. So today is the day when God begins to fill each one of us with appetite. Because that will be an indication that you are healthy spiritually. So you shall not leave this place until God has fixed your soul by putting hunger inside it. So here's the question. How do you awaken hunger for God? If God is wanting us to be hungry for him, how do we awaken that? Two things. Number one, ask. Number two, fast. We can ask God to give us the blessing of hunger. Just like he gave appetite for manna to Israelites. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, the Bible says, If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, we know that we have what we asked of him. If we ask anything according to his will, the Bible says he pays attention. And as he pays attention, he gives. Now we know it is the will of God for you to have an appetite, a hunger for God. So that is something you can ask for. God is happy to answer a prayer from someone who says, Lord, fill my soul with a hunger for yourself. God is so quick to attend to those prayers. So ask. Hunger for God doesn't come naturally. It is supernatural. God has to arouse it in you so that you can respond back to him. So ask. Kneel before him and say, Lord, I have no appetite for you, but now I pray, fill my soul with your appetite. But number two, fast, which is what we are doing during this season. Among the benefits of fasting is that fasting diminishes the cravings of the flesh while at the same time elevating the desires of the spirit. Fasting does that. As you go on a prolonged fast especially, and you are seeking the face of God seriously, you'll be very surprised how the flesh will die. No, it won't die completely. How it will be diminished. Somehow, it gets overpowered, overpowered and it begins to diminish in its cravings. At the same time, your desire for God, your desire for the things of God begins to arise. Before you know it, you are not even feeling hungry anymore. And all you desire is to pray. 
All you desire is to meditate. That's the power of fasting. So the Lord is saying, those who are, hung, who are wanting to be hungry for God, ask. And as you ask, also fast. Fasting is called crucifying the body. That is what it is called. There are cravings in this body that easily lead us astray. But in fasting, we get them crucified. And the spirit becomes alive. I believe God is speaking to someone here today. The time has come to start the year with hunger for God. And God is inviting you this moment to ask. He's inviting you to sanctify a fast. When the hunger of God comes into you, you will stop at nothing regarding spiritual things. It will be a sign you are healthy and you will have achieved the capacity to continue receiving from God. That's the place to be. Let's stand to our feet as we pray. Biola, could you please help us with the instrument as we pray this morning? I believe God has been speaking to each one of us. We hear God differently when a sermon comes. But one thing is clear. God wants to change our spiritual status. We need a hunger. So I'd like us to pray. For those of you that are listening from home, Please join us in prayer as we pray for a hunger for God to invade our souls. As the deer panteth for the water brooks, so my soul longeth after thee, O Lord. May this be your desire. Thank you, precious Lord. Just talk to him this morning. Shikoka sintere masataya. Mako sintere mama mama. We thank you, precious Lord, that your presence is in this place. We thank you that, Lord, you said, ask and you shall receive. What we do not have, it is because, Lord, we never get to ask. But this morning, Lord, as we come to you, we thank you that you are ready to dispatch your blessings of hunger upon each one of us. As I pray this morning, if you are hungry for God, I would like you to lift up your hand, including those that are watching from home. As every eye is closed, you are hungry for God. Lift up your right hand as a sign of surrender, whichever hand you afford to lift. Let it be a sign of surrender to God. Begin to talk to him. <coughs> Precious Lord, you see these hands. We thank you that, Lord, as we are reaching out to you, you take recognition of the plea of our hearts to be filled with the hunger which is the beginning of everything we shall ever do and achieve in God. Precious Lord, I pray, touch every soul that has a hand lifted up. I pray that hunger comes into their souls right now in Jesus' mighty name. Release hunger in Jesus' name. Hunger in the name of Jesus Christ.
You promised, Lord, that you shall pour water on thirsty ground. On him that is thirsty, you have promised to pour your spirit. And therefore, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the outpouring of the Spirit of God upon God's people. May this hunger, Lord, become a driving force for your children seeking after you. May it be a sign of good health. May it be an increase in capacity to receive from God. In the name of Jesus, for those that are home, Lord, as they surrender to God, asking God for hunger, Lord, I pray may you fill their souls. May there be no rest until we have sought you and found you and experienced you. In Jesus' name, receive it now. Receive God's hunger. Receive it within your soul. Receive it now. Go ahead and give him thanks. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, precious Lord. You are the giver of every good and perfect gift. Shiko Kasantaraba. Thank you for the gift of hunger. Thank you for the increased capacity to receive from God. Thank you for the good health that we receive this morning as you deposit hunger into our souls. We thank you that, Lord, we shall never be the same. We thank you that we have become a force that cannot be stopped until we achieve the fullness of God's things. We bless you, Father. We give you thanks. We pray for our community this morning. Lord, our community needs hunger. Our souls, dear Lord, need a hunger for God. Lord, behold, there should be many at the altar this morning. There should be many before the presence of the Lord, seeking the face of God. But behold, Lord, only a handful. A sign that there is no appetite for God in our land. Send a hunger upon our land. Send a hunger upon our province. Send a hunger upon our national leaders. Send a hunger upon our civic leaders. Send a hunger upon our children who do not know you. Send a hunger upon those, dear Lord, that have already received the message of Christ and have been delaying coming. Send a hunger. Send a hunger. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Let every family represented here become a point of contact that their people are receiving a hunger for God even as they are in the presence of God. We receive it, O God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And every saint said, Amen. And Amen. Let's go ahead and give him a hand. Just lift up your head and say, Thank you, Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he turn his countenance towards you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.